uh, children, we have derived four equations and we did few problems in the previous class. I was just focusing on a simple idea. Motion in a straight line with a constant acceleration, right? So some kind of exercise, some kind of problems will be attempting now. And kinematics is such a lesson where you actually understand what to do in physics. There's no, not much of physics here because you don't talk about force and other things. But still, how to connect the physical situation to a mathematical uh, set of equations. That's what you learn practically in kinematics. So let us just try some interesting sums, if not very difficult. Okay. Uh, yes. Mm, look at this. A particle moves along a straight line with a constant acceleration. It has velocities v1, v2 at two points a and b during its motion. Find the velocity at the midpoint of line a, b. Find also the velocity after half the time from a. So, how do we start? Particle moves along a straight line with a constant acceleration. So what shall we do? As usual, you need to picture the question. A particle moves along a straight line, right? It has velocities V1 and V2 at two points during its motion. We don't know where it started. We don't know where is it going up to, but the way the problem is framed, it has velocities v1 and v2 at two points a and b during its motion. Find the velocity at the midpoint of a b. Actually, this is not given. Try to understand. It only was told that with a constant acceleration. So, what shall we do? What is that equation having v2, v1, and distance? No time. Tell me, children. What is that equation consisting of V, U, and S and A? V square minus U square is equal to A. And he is asking you the velocity at the midpoint of A, B. Some unknown velocity V we need to find out. You couldn't have told that at the midpoint it is V1 plus V2 by 2. Can you? Hmm? Can you say that? We don't know. Let us see. V equals how much you wanted. So let me apply V square minus V square equals to S two times. This V square minus V one square equals two A, which we don't know. We will suppose that acceleration is A and this distance will be how much children? A B by two distance a b by 2 here for this and this v square minus v1 square is 2a s a we don't know we'll eliminate it now for these two you write v2 square minus v square equals once again 2 into a into once again the distance is a b by 2 so since both are equal i can write v square minus v1 square equals v2 square minus v square so 2v square equals v1 square plus v2 square. So v equals at one go, I'll write v1 square plus v2 square by 2. This, is, this, is, this can be considered an exercise problem. 
there's not much of a difficulty here. Hmm? We are simply substituting the given things in the equations known. That's what I mean by level one problem or exercise problem. Is it all right? Now, yes, sir. how do we do the second one? Velocity after half the time. Once again, I'll draw the same picture here. A, B. We don't know the time, but let us think it is T. So at T by two time, velocity, it won't be covering half the distance, try right? to understand the body has an acceleration. I told you already, if your body is having an acceleration, the later distances will be greater. So at T by two, somewhere here, it might have had some velocity V, right? It's unknown, not the same, we try to understand it. This is a different problem. Since I know here V1 and V2, I'm taking some V like that. So I can write V equals U plus A into T by 2. But these two, if I write, or this and this, if I write, this is the final velocity. So V2 equals initial velocity V plus A T by 2 once again. So if you make A T by 2, same, because T is not there, we'll eliminate it. What will I write? V minus V1 equals V2 minus V. So if I bring that side and write finally V1 plus V2 by 2. Just try to understand these two results in a physical sense. Okay. These two examples, two results, you try to understand something about the accelerated motion. After half the time, it's becoming V1 plus V2 by 2, but not after half the distance. Can you comment on this? Hmm? But remember, though this is a, a simple question where <coughs> from simple questions simple problems you can understand the concept well because there's only one idea there after getting the answer let us try to uh, interpret the answer and understand something from it yes Sachit tell me did you see the question and the answer there yes sir so what's your comment on the results The mm -hmm. answers are not uh, as I expected. No, actually, remember, uh, formulas, application, getting the answers is all right. But every time we need to look back. After the problem analysis is very important. Yes, sir. First of all, after half the distance, why you cannot write V1 plus V2 by 2, you know? Hmm? Tell me. I don't know. Are, yesterday only we told, no, like, how the distances keep changing uh, okay, a, with acceleration, constant. Um, the acceleration for equal time intervals. If you take, they go on increasing, uh, isn't it? Uh, uh, mm. so that the later, later, the distances later. covered will be greater. So the whole idea of this is that, yes, definitely it's not going to be the average. This is average velocity for a constant acceleration case. This is yeah. V1 plus V2 by 2 is, we did not average even velocity. that actually remember, but I told you when a body moves with a constant acceleration, if u is some initial velocity, v is final, average velocity can write as u plus v by 2, I told. So that yes. way we could write v of time after half the time as average velocity we got. Yes. Time, velocity after half the time is coming to be equal to the average, average. a and b. So that is something special. The reason is this, that average velocity we define is average over time, not average over distance. Yes. Total distance by total time we take. Hmm? Yes, sir. Hmm. Yes. Got it. Okay, let us see. Huh? But finish up the answers, children. These things keep coming back again. Can I go to the next question, children? Yes, sir. Right. 
this is another easy question I put here. Uh, Pavani, read this. Yes. Mm. When traffic lights turn green, mm. a car waiting at the junction starts with an acceleration of two meter per second square. Okay, just at a minute. Same... Wait, wait, wait. So, what kind of a picture I'll put, children? Hmm. Pavani, you only tell me. Hmm. What kind of a picture I should put? Sir, we can Road draw at like one end. Uh, one end traffic lights. Ah, uh, the here we have got traffic lights. Okay. Huh? And at the other end, a car. On this side, car. So one car is waiting here. That means it's going to start from rest. And a truck is coming from behind. Yes, sir. That was a question. Isn't it so? So whether you draw it physically here or don't draw it, but imagine in the mind, but this has to be gone through this process of visualizing has to be gone through in the in your mind to do physics problems this is a traffic signal so it was waiting means what it is starting with zero yes. in velocity but yes, immediately it has an acceleration of how much two meter per second two meters per second second and this was already coming with 20 meters per second am i right yeah yes so when this was starting here and this was just passing past the car. So initially truck will be ahead of the car because it has started with zero velocity, but is accelerating whereas this is maintaining the speed. So definitely the car is going to catch up with the truck. Do you agree? Yes. Sir. Yes. Sir. So let us think after a time T somewhere from the traffic signal they are meeting that means the car is overtaking the truck so from here the distance traveled by the two things will be same right huh? so s1 that is s car will be how much children half a into t square u is zero s by truck will be what ut because this speed is not changing this is no accelerated motion but both travel the same distance right so 2 to cancelling t square equals 20 t. So t equals 20, 20 seconds. Substitute somewhere, you'll get s equals 400. Either you substitute there or here, it doesn't matter. So from here, after traveling 20 seconds, when the travel distance of 400 meters, the car is going to overtake the truck. All right? Yes, sir. Come on. Now slowly we will increase the level of the question. So, is this all right, children? Yes, sir. Uh, supposing you're not looking at the screen, can you just describe the question, Manikarnika? Without looking at the screen. Yes, sir. Problem. Do you remember this has some truck and car problem where car is overtaking the truck from the traffic signals, something like that. That kind of a physical situation, if you can remember, uh, life will be easy. All right. Yes. For some, this some are not very difficult, but still they require some kind of uh, visualization, like what is happening. Okay. Braided, sir. Right. Now, next question. Slowly, the difficulty level will increase. Hmm. The question is lengthy. One issue with physics problems is that they are going to be lengthy. So you should have a habit of you should have had a habit of reading first. Reading comprehension, you must have 
done in your schools in a big way should have done then this would be easy so hmm Tanishka, come on, read this question. A bird flies with a speed of 10 km, hour, can 10 km per hour and a car with 8 km per hour. Yeah. Both start from a point B and yes. move towards... Both start from a point B. Some point B I have here. What bird and... Car. Car whatever that is bird and a car okay uh. move towards the point towards the point a at a. the same instance given okay. start together and uh, simultaneously the distance is 40 kilometers right the bird re uh, the bird having reached a See, bird flies back. more velocity uh, the car is having Less velocity. Less velocity. Okay. Uh. The bird having reached A flies back immediately to meet, meet the approaching car. Mm. It flies back to A. Mm. The bird repeats this. It repeats this till both the car and the bird reach A simultaneously. A simultaneously. Mm. Find the total distance flown by the bird. Mm. See, you know, the car is 8 km per hour. This is having 10, so it will go there, huh? touch here, and then come back. By the time this would be somewhere here. Once again, it goes there and comes back. They will be still moving. It goes there and comes back. Finally, the bird in the car will reach a simultaneously. So, tell me. That is, says, for example, a bird, uh, a pet bird, the driver has released it. So it is flying up to A, then coming back to meet the owner. Then once again, it's going to A and coming back to meet the owner. Like that. Isn't it? So tell me, what should I do? Children, come on. So first we have to calculate the time covered by car. That's good. Very good. So it's going with a constant speed because nothing is mentioned about the acceleration. Right? So time for the car will be 40 kilometers divided by 8. 8 kilometers per hour. Work. How much? 5 minutes. 5? 5 hours. Why I don't know that. Alright, no problem. 8 km per hour, 40 km. Okay, no problem. Mm. That's too small. All right, then? Then we have to find the distance covered by the bird mm. by substituting pi hours in the formula. So, 40 into 5. So, what shall we do after that? The distance covered by the bird will be simply the bird speed is 10 km per hour into 5 hours so simply 50 kilometers but understand the question is very important hmm? Sriya tell me Sir, can we do it in another way like finding the time of the bird and then we'll get that as four hours, like to reach it. Find the time and of the bird, you cannot. You like can. only from B to A, sir. Simply because it's going and coming back, you won't be knowing, no, how much time it took. Hmm? Sir, like initially, if we find it, the time taken from B to A before it comes back. I try to understand this question this way. Okay. We are not worried about the velocity of the bird. We are worried about the speed of the bird. You know, the bird goes, reaches the car, meets the car and goes back again. But as a whole, it is taking only five hours time because by the time car reaches the even bird is reaching it once again. Isn't so? 
So I'm using yes, the sir. idea of distance here, not displacement. This actually the total distance is 40, but it is covering 50. Why? It's going there, coming back, going there, coming back, going Light. there, isn't it? So yes, sir. this is just to test you whether you have the idea of velocity and speed properly. So what is the other way you want to do? You tell me. Sir, what I wanted to do was find the time the bird takes. Find the, then, how would you find the bird takes? Because it is going back and forth, no? I mean, for only first, for the first time, from B to A. First time from B to A, okay. And then that I got it as four hours. So okay. in the rest one hour, I thought of... Like that. Even that's not a bad idea. Okay. You understood what she was trying to tell? Huh? Yes. Because anyway, yes. bird went up to A first. So it took how much time for that? Bird took uh, four hours. Four hours. Four hours. Yes. Isn't it so? Yes. Yes. So, and this is taking, but anyway, you need to find the time with the car. Remember it. Car is taking five. Right? In the, in the remaining one hour, we should cover one into ten. Ten. So how many trips you're not worried about it, right? Yes. Hmm. So this is just looking big. How many lines actually? Three, three plus three, six plus three, nine plus three, 12 lines it is given. But the answer is very small. Okay. Anybody sir? else would like to say anything? Yes, sir. Tell me. By the uh, in the first round, uh, when the bird returns back to B, uh, the no, it, bird the, doesn't return back to B, it returns back to the car, and car is somewhere else. Okay, right? Car car is three and a half, uh, three, three okay. by four hour uh, from right. B to A. But you need not worry because the question asked is only what total distance the car, bird is covering. Okay. So, anybody else to say something? So, if you followed, I'll move ahead because there are even better sums which will take some time. All right, Shivlan, can I continue? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Vuna, read this. A particle starts from rest and moves with a uniform acceleration mm. alpha for some time, mm. then retards at a uniform rate beta and stops. Mm. Fine. Find the maximum velocity during the motion mm. and the total displacement, mm. considering the total time of motion is t. First of all, in such kind of problems where the problem is given in general terms but not in numericals, you have, to, you have to remember that you should get your answers in terms of what are given in the problem. You can suppose acceleration to be some, the time to be something or whatever, but that should not come. The total time, alpha, beta. What I mean to, what I meant to say was, this alpha acceleration may be there for a time t1. This beta acceleration may be there for a time t2. t2. But the t1, t2 don't come into picture. Try to understand. Your answer must be in terms of the things given in the problem. So that's the first thing you need to understand when a problem is given in general terms. Do you follow? So what shall I do with this here? Yes. Mm, the cars, once again, some kind of a picture you can require. It starts from rest, it says. Right? A particle. And goes on accelerating, 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 gets maximum velocity there. The acceleration is alpha. From there, it decelerates with beta, another acceleration, not the same alpha there. And then once again, stops. So somewhere here, it gets a maximum velocity. We can call it V maximum. Do you understand the meaning of it? Yes, sir. Others, please. Or somebody wants to show it in the velocity time graph, you can do that. 
how the uniform acceleration uh, case will be Inc increasing and it and then falls yes sir slopes will be different because we don't know that alpha beta are not same alpha beta are not same there do you follow you understand what i mean by slope being different yes sir huh what i was trying to tell you this time is different this time is different if beta had been equal to alpha the same time you could have written and same slope like this you could have written are you following that pavani so this is where you got yes, p sir. maximum say this time is t1 say this time is t2 so what equation sh should come to your mind children v equals u plus at right huh tell me yes sir so v max equals 0 plus alpha t1 t1 i don't know right t1 equals v max by alpha now here zero velocity here initial velocity is v max zero equals v max minus beta t2 children v equals u plus at once again my application nothing else so t2 is v max by what beta so t1 plus t2 is v max hmm? alpha plus v max 1 by alpha plus 1 by beta but this according to the whole question is total time so t is v max into what will i get alpha plus beta by alpha beta alpha beta what alpha beta t by all right so you may ask anything you want in the beginning i am showing problems like this but slowly when the assignments are given you are supposed to do them on your own i want you to get into the mood of physics basically and then can you guess as to how we'll do for s can you guess now how how will i do for s you got four equations nothing else just from the graph you can do like this for example this this is going to give you the area area is going to give you the displacement here right so s1 equals half into t1 into v max am i correct half base into height s2 equals half t2 into v max do you agree tell me yes sir yes sir the triangle what else why are you worried s sometimes s2 is what s so v max by 2 into t1 plus t2 how much is that T. T. So V max is substitute directly. Half alpha beta t. Another t is there. T square by alpha plus beta in a simple way. But otherwise, you can also write s one u s equals u t plus half. It is. It is. That we also can get. It. But this is the easier way. Any questions to be asked? Hmm? Sir, also seeing the graph and multiplying t into v max by two. Tell, tell me again. Uh, by seeing the graph, uh. total displacement is equal to v max into t by two. V max into t by two, yeah. That's right. Yeah, because the total base is t one plus t two. Half into base into height for the total triangle, isn't it? And t one plus t two is total time t, and V max is already known from the previous one. Yes. Sir. All right. Yes. Sir. Right. Hmm. Or you can write. 
S equals e two plus half a d square for this, this for this, and then write s one plus s two. All that you can still do slightly lengthier. But remember, there's nothing like lengthy also in physics. In mass, of course, we can talk of elegant uh, solutions. In physics, also we can talk, but uh, not a, even if you cannot get a shorter solution, physics doesn't take a lot of time. If your calculation capacity is good, even if you go in the linear way and get a little late, also have no problem because I want the accuracy of the uh, solving and ideas. All right, children, shall we continue? Huh? Yes. Yes, sir. Right. This is something difficult, small, but see how you can answer it. Hmm. Shreya, Shreya Dhamma. Can you read the question, child? Come on. Shreya. Initial velocity moves down for zero initial velocity moves down an inclined plane from a height edge and huh. then ascends along the same plane with initial velocity such that it stops at the same height edge. In which case is the motion longer? Time of motion longer. Hmm. So, how do we understand this question? Deliberately, I put it here just to make your minds become active. So, how do I put my picture here? Inclined plane is like this, children. Hmm. A body with zero initial velocity moves down. It starts with u equals zero. If this angle was theta, children, if this was smooth, what would the what would be the acceleration? I told you from Galileo's idea. G sine theta, right? If this is G. If this is a 90 minus theta children, the component of G in this direction is what? G cos 90 minus theta, which is G? Sin theta. Sin theta. This is what I told you as diluting gravity. We are taking it as smooth. So this height is H. Okay, so this distance will be what children? If I call it L, sin theta is H by L, isn't it so? Huh? So L is H by sin theta. So that H by sin theta distance will be covered with an acceleration G sin theta. So the body, as it comes down, will get a velocity V. Some V it gets, right? Now, if you push it up with the same V, once again, the deceleration is G sin theta, right? Like if I throw a body up in under gravity upwards, whatever time it takes to go up, it will take the same time to come down because G is constant. It doesn't make a difference whether it's G or G sine theta. While going down, the G sine theta is increasing the speed. While coming up, G sine theta will decrease the speed by the same amount because acceleration is constant. Do you follow my point? So I can simply say that if there's no friction, the time should be same. You need not you need not have to know so much about dynamics here. Just acceleration wise, if you know, that's enough. So it's an open question, open ended question, because nothing is mentioned about the nature of the inclined plane rough or smooth is not mentioned this distance l huh, will be covered in what time if you want you can calculate if you want to check it what will you write v equals u zero plus a a is how much g sine theta into what uh, t of course 
that we you won't be knowing just a minute v square you want to get time or uh, velocity whatever that's left to you you have to find out v you have to find out t first if you want that is what will i do uh, h by sin theta equals u is 0 plus half g sin theta into t square what did i apply now what did i apply s equals u t plus half a t square I applied u is 0 what do you say children huh yes so t yeah. square will be what 2 h by g sin square theta am i right so 2 will be 1 by sin theta into root of 2 h by g that is time to come down i'm proving it i've just given it but i was just proving it here do you all agree the way i did it tell me boys balavardhan raviteja and others yes sir have you understood what i have done here yes, i went sir. i went very slow but now if i calculate time to go up i require v see when the final velocity is, this will be initial velocity this will be final velocity in that case i can write s equals vt minus half at square children can i i told you already no previously while deriving the equations this will make the job simple work huh? so what is s now what is s h by sine theta equals zero final loss is zero minus a a is minus g sine theta now while going up into t square so the same time will you get or not tell me people are not talking children uh, yes sir yes sir hmm. so if yes, the, yes. if the acceleration time depends on acceleration try to understand uh, so if it is a smooth plane whatever time it takes to come down if you project it up with the same speed if you want you can find the speed and project it and see what will be the speed children here v square minus u square equals 2 a s so what will be v square here u is 0 2 into g sine theta into h by sine theta so v square is what 2 g h right so v is root of 2 g h throw it up with the same speed what height it goes you can calculate if you want are you catching my writing here everybody i just showed it this way but i'm also showing this way i'm throwing it up with the same v for example v will be root of 2 gh right yes sir so final velocity is zero so zero square minus initial velocity 2 gh is equal to 2 into while going up acceleration is opposite direction to the velocity so minus g sine theta into distance code is what h by what is that we wanted time we wanted i'm sorry that that, that equation won't work let me change this equation is not the point we wanted what time time to go up what should i do, do then final loss is zero zero equals u u is how much root of 2 gh minus a is what g sine theta into t they write properly velocity is root 2 gh yes 0 minus g sine theta into t so what will be t now tell me root of 2 gh by g sin theta the same thing you got 1 by sin theta at root of h by g 
of course after you did more of physics all this you will do without thinking without writing so much because the acceleration up and down are same if it comes down and if i throw it with the same velocity the condition is that whatever velocity it had now with that velocity i should throw it then it will reach the same height same distance it will travel and take same time that is if the inclined plane is smooth but if the inclined plane is rough things will be different if the inclined plane is rough the situation is different tell me the space was not there i don't think you have any issue there in writing it but you have an issue please ask because slowly the level of questions will increase and don't don't be scared because i want you to show the culture of doing few good physics problems children you are not speaking i'm i'm really worried now is that all right whatever i have done or yes, sir. because i have written so much you are con getting confused no sir hmm. so <laughs> if there is no if there is no friction here the uh, time will be same for up and down all yes, right hmm. so but if the friction is there what shall we do i'll rub this off rub this off children if friction is there what could be the idea you need not have to do full you need not have to do do any dynamics nothing that will come later newton's laws all that but little guess you can do that you drop a body down here hmm some height h this can be theta for example you need to decide look uh if you write the equation for this huh this velocity is v this distance is l if you write what will you get children here time equals v square no it equals what can i write ut u is 0 Huh? Half a t one square. Well, coming down, I'll say the time is t one. So t one will be what, children? Two l by a under root. That means it depends on acceleration. Let me call it a one. All right. Tell me, if I project it with v like this, final velocity is zero. If I write that equation once again. suppose the distance is same it is going to same height vt v is zero you don't understand final velocity minus half minus at square l right because while going up acceleration is opposite to the velocity so once again i'll get t2 equals root of 2l by a2 that means l is same for both but accelerations are different because friction will be different and friction will be acting in different direction while coming down while coming down friction acts up while going up friction acts down but g sin theta is all the time downwards while going up or coming down g sin theta is this way friction is that way so acceleration to friction is backward acceleration to gravity is forward while going up acceleration to gravity is backward friction is also backward in which case the acceleration will be more you tell me now while coming down it is a1 children while going up it is a2 so in which case acceleration is greater you tell me a1 is greater than a2 a1 is greater or a2 is greater is greater uh, look i'll tell you yeah. look 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 g sin theta is anyway downwards so while coming down there is another acceleration because of friction that is some friction acceleration you say some a a not a some a dash 
So G sin theta down A backwards. So the net acceleration is what? G sin theta minus A downwards. Well, going up, G sin theta is down, A is down. So the deceleration is G sin theta plus A dash here. There it is G sin theta minus A dash here. So which is more? G sin theta plus A dash. So this deceleration is more. That means A2 is more. You understand? That means T2 is less. T1 is longer. That means the coming time will be greater than the time going up. Tell me now. So if there's an open ended question given there. I want your feedback. If your feedback is good, I can do better sums. If your feedback is not good, I'll go for other sums. Stia? Yes, sir. Do you think you followed this? Yes, sir. Tell me, what did you follow? So here, uh, like in the case description, hmm. Sir, so while we are while the while the body is going down, mm. the frictional force is acting in the same direction. While going down, frictional force acting in the same direction. What do you mean? Going up or going down? Coming down. When the body is released from the top, it comes down. Friction is up. Ah uh, yes, sir. Uh, friction is opposing G sine theta. Well, the body is coming down. Yes, sir. Huh? And when yes. going up, see any time friction will be opposite to the relative motion, children. The inclined plane is at rest. So the while coming down, the motion of the block is down, so friction will act upwards to oppose the motion. While going up also, it is. I don't know whether you understood. As this is coming down, friction is acting this way on this I told you. As this goes up. Friction also acts this way, but gravity G sin theta is also this way. So this will be decelerating faster than this accelerating while coming down. So the same distance will be covered in lesser time while going up. This will take longer time while coming down. So that is what you really need to understand. If you have a problem, you tell me because there are some even better sums than this. So I told you already, it all depends on your feedback. Here, without talking about Newton's laws, without knowing about friction, still we can try this problem from the kinematics ideas was my uh, idea when I gave this problem. Bhuvana? Yes, sir. Uh, Yogi, what do you want to say? I'm sorry. Nothing, sir. sir. Nothing, sir. Sachit, tell me. Sir, if deceleration is more, the time taken to travel up must be greater, no, sir? If deceleration is more, time will be less. For deceleration the... means negative acceleration, right, sir? True. Whether it's negative or positive try to understand the acceleration will decide the time if acceleration is more it takes less time yes sir. Hmm? okay of course okay. we have given same velocity to go up this is for sure is going up right yes sir tell me so it should go up faster because the deceleration is high I showed it in the equations. No, time is inversely proportional to root of acceleration. Okay, okay. Acceleration is what, children? It's not pulling the body down. Don't under, don't misunderstand. Body will be moving up only, but the velocity keeps becoming smaller, sm smaller and smaller, faster. So the velocity becomes zero faster in the case of going up than it is coming down. So this is looking 
counterintuitive for you? Tell me. The same is the case when you consider the air resistance and throw the body up. Can you tell me now? I throw a body up. Generally, we say if the air resistance is not taken into account, the body takes u by g to go up, u by g to come down. Or forget about u by g, it takes same time to go up and come down. Now, if air resistance is there while I throw a body up, what will happen from this? You can tell me. Because I'm going to talk that later, but uh, physics is such a nice subject where you can connect uh, things uh, from somewhere to somewhere. If I take air resistance account, then the time taken for it to go up will be greater. Uh, just now you proved that time to go up will be shorter than the time to come down. Same is the case with air friction there. Friction and MJ acts downwards. Yeah, friction acts downwards, MJ acts downwards. Whereas while coming down, MJ acts down, friction acts upward. So the acceleration becomes less. So it will be yes, sir. kind of a coming down slowly. Isn't it so? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. yes, both sir. intuitive and as well mathematics, both should be understood. Shreya Dhamma, we agree with what I told. Yes, sir. Hmm. You can take some time, be cool, but this is what we need to do, children. Don't we say, when you throw a body up, if the air is, this is not considered, the time to go up will be same as the time to come down. Don't we say this? Even in 10th class, you must have done? Yes, sir. Hmm. But practically speaking, air is, is always there. So if air resistance is considered, you know that it takes lesser time to go up and longer time to come down. Hmm? Why? While coming down, friction mm. will be upwards. Yes, sir. So that will reduce the G. Whereas while going up, friction and MG are downwards. So that will increase the acceleration of the body to reduce its velocity. Right? Yes. So that kind of a thing you should be understanding. All right, I'll continue. Can I continue, children? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Ah, oh, come on. This is not a difficult question, once again. Yes, M. Vaisnami, read it, Amma. A particle starts from the origin with a velocity of 10 meter per second. Let me say, this is the origin. It starts with? That means U was this. Uh, mm. come, come, read. We need to read. Hello, M. Vaishnavi. Chilan, can you hear me? Is the connection there? Yes, sir. We can, we can hear sir. Uh, Then why Vaishnavi stopped? So it is accelerating. We don't know the acceleration, children. Huh? We are not given the acceleration, but what he says is it accelerates until the velocity becomes some 50 meters per second. Here, the acceleration which is forward now gets reversed. So what is the time? What will be the time? What will be the velocity of the particle when it returns to the starting point? Tell me, children. Will it be 10 again? Hello, Pillalu, Matra Randi, Pick. Children, speak. Sriya. Yes, sir. Uh, what's happening? Remember, when the direction of acceleration changes, don't ever think the body is coming back. The body is slowing down. 
the body slowing down because of this relation stop somewhere then since this axle is still there it will be one accelerating like this so that is a trick of the problem do you follow yes sir so this will tell you that acceleration is not the direction of motion which i'll discuss once again in more mathematical terms but still you need to understand that suddenly if the acceleration direction reverses don't think the body will start moving back like that it doesn't start moving back like this what will happen the speed will go on decreasing 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 become zero then this axle this deceleration previously now becomes acceleration do you understand this yes sir really yes sir oh. others tejas sir sriya yes sir i got the answer tell me how much 70 meter per second that's correct that's correct Hmm. So this is what is going to happen, children. Don't say the body will go back like that. If you think it's going back like this, it will say once again ten meters per second, isn't it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So Shreya's answer is correct. So how to get it? I use the equation v square minus u square is equal to two as. For what? For this first one. Uh, I took s one the distance traveled when u is ten meter per second, mm. and then s two be the distance traveled the when u is equal to fifty meter per second and v is zero meter per second. Yeah. So will s one be equal to s two, Shreya? No, oh, sir. It won't be. S one is coming out to be uh, no, to twenty four hundred. He's having ten meters per second velocity here, so it's becoming zero here. So these distances cannot be same. Hmm? Yes, sir. So you wanted the velocity back when you come back like this, isn't it? So children, a is not known. Hmm. So Sriya here, tell me, what should I do? She has got it, the answer already. I want others to do it. Aryan. Have you read the full question there? Yes, sir. I read, read it. So how how should I do that? Shreya was suggesting something. You tell me. So you're saying s one s two. I applied v square minus u square. Whichever way, that's not big deal. Why she was calculating s one s two? You know, because it will start and then come back with the same acceleration. Acceleration is there, right? Initial velocity is there while coming back. So if I knew the distance, I would get the velocities. Her idea, so she did it. She got it. So I have no problem with that. So can I do the same thing now? Fifty square minus ten square is equal to two a s one. Huh? So how much is this? Twenty four hundred. Twenty four hundred is equal to two a s one. Two hundred. Uh, 1200 by is this one? Isn't it so? Yes. Yes, sir. Now zero, zero square minus 50 square is equal to two into minus a. I should write now deceleration into s2. Isn't it so? So s2 will be how much children? 1250. Yeah. 2250 by two. How much? Yes, sir. 1250. So twelve fifty by eight. So it is what one by a into twelve hundred plus twelve fifty is the distance, right? The total distance s. Now it goes from here to there. So unknown velocity v. If you think v square minus zero square equals what will I get? Two into Huh? Same a acceleration a into s, one by a into all that, isn't it? How much is that? Twenty four. Two four five zero. Two four five zero. Two four five zero. So this a got cancelled. So v square equals 
two into two four five zero. How much is this? Forty nine hundred. Oh, forty nine hundred. Forty nine hundred. Forty nine hundred. Right. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Plan more sums, but only less. Okay, one more problem I'll try before I go for the next class. Let me see. Okay, this is also similar. Anyway, I'll put the PDF. Let us see. The PDF, of course, for you people, it's not available. The sums I can do tomorrow also, not a bad thing. I'll, I'll, I'll send my PDF to you also, everybody. Just try this question because it takes some time. Okay. But if you can do 10 problems, good problems in one hour in the class, then that's a good uh, rate, but all right. But anyway, I have increased the difficulty level slowly. So if you can try these problems, tomorrow I'll discuss them. All right, children? Yes, okay. sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. End the Thank PowerPoint you, of the share and end the session.